Good morning and welcome to Snap Tech IT's monthly webinar for May 2024. My name is Ted Hulsey. I'm Chief Revenue Officer for Snap Tech IT and your host for today's event. Thanks for joining in for the live session. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and circulated to all registrants. You can always also visit us on our YouTube channel for all of our content on demand. The topic for today is what is Microsoft Copilot and how can it boost your business? Uh, today, I'm joined by SnapTech co-founder and president, Sean Brown. Sean, welcome to the webinar. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Excited for this topic. So. Okay. Yeah, today, um, we don't have a ton of slides. Um, it's going to be very demo intensive. So we're going to be toggling back and forth between both of our machines and showing demos. <laughs> and Sean's crossing his fingers, as am I. Um, and uh, but let's let's have a quick look. Um, I guess before we look at the agenda, one thing we always try to do is just spend about 30 seconds explaining a little bit about who SnapTech is. So we are a security first managed service provider uh, with operations in Atlanta, Georgia, Phoenix, Arizona, and San Francisco, California. Um, most of our clients have headquarters in those cities, but we also have clients that are nationwide. Um, you know. We love to lead with education, and that's really the mission of today's webinar and our monthly webinar program. Um, and we realize that for a lot of organizations, you know, technology can be a colossal headache, um, and it can really get in the way of your people being productive and satisfied in their jobs. Uh, we face all of these challenges, downtime, frustrated employees, frequent tech issues, slow response times from your current provider, and our point of view is that technology should be here to solve problems in our businesses, not create them. And that's our mission to help you solve that challenge. The way we do it is we deliver a world-class IT uh, service and support to our clients. Uh, we do that with a proven process. Uh, we really uh, believe passionately in giving our clients a technology roadmap or a technology plan and a budget so they know where their IT is going over one to three years. Um, we help them implement best practices in their organization, especially around the areas of cybersecurity. We're able to allow organizations to embrace the work anywhere trend and be productive no matter how you're growing your workforce and, and your organization. And when stuff does break, when you do need support, we provide it in a friendly and reliable and fast sort of way, which hopefully gives our clients peace of mind um, that somebody is here to be their guide and that we're looking after your security and your data. Um, we, we engage with our clients in two different ways. Uh, on the left, we talk about managed, fully managed IT. This is where you don't have anybody on staff who has IT on their badge. You need, you need a partner that does it all for you. So that's a big part of our business, obviously. And then we also serve larger organizations that have an internal IT manager department or team and those sorts of organizations will take part of their IT workload and outsource it to us, and we call that co-managed IT. So let's get into the uh, agenda. Um, we're gonna spend just a couple minutes on slides and talk about what Copilot is. Um, you know, how is Microsoft pricing it? How do you think about it from a licensing perspective? And then we're gonna get heavily into demos. Um, so let's, uh, and, and we're gonna, Sean's gonna take, um, applications like uh, email, um, in Outlook, in Outlook and the web, um, Teams, OneNote, and we're, he's going to look at those applications. And then I'm going to pick up uh, on Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. And we're going to show how Copilot works and how it can really be a productivity enhancer for your team. Um, so uh, let's see here. Let me just move a couple things. All right. So, um, you know, Microsoft Copilot, um, you, you can, uh, it was announced formally to the marketplace in September of 2023, and you can purchase it directly from Microsoft um, on a retail basis, or you can source uh, Copilot through your managed service provider. In terms of thinking about the different versions of Copilot, so I think one comment is important to make just right off the bat is that Microsoft kind of um, Copilot is maybe what you might call like a, a solution category for Microsoft. Um, and then, th so they have copilots for every software application they make effectively. So, um, you know, it's so think about it like an overlay solution brand. And then what Microsoft is doing is finding every different, say, 
uh, you know, software application or bundle of applications, and then creating a product SKU that can be added to that product or bundle uh, that's called Copilot for X. Um, and so, um, so that's kind of Microsoft's overall approach with the Copilot brand. It's a little confusing and it's been changing over time. And Microsoft does have the habit of changing sometimes rather arbitrarily the names of things. Um, but we're, we're trying to make it a sim super simple for you all today to, to make sure you understand where you need to action today. In our world, which is kind of small and medium business up to mid-market, um, these are the Copilot products that are most relevant today. Every consumer out there can leverage Copilot technology um, for free. So there are, there's an iOS app. Um, you can uh, you know, enable Copilot on your Windows PC. There's free versions. Um, all of the Copilot technology leverages the OpenAI engine or ChatGPT um, uh, inside the, the actual product. Um, and then there's, so there's a lot of stuff you could, every consumer can do with Copilot out there today, but it's rather limited because you're using the earlier versions of ChatGPT. You, uh, you have a limited amount of capacity to use the product on a daily basis. So the free version only gets you so far. We're gonna really focus today mostly on the right-hand column here is Copilot for Microsoft 365. Um, nearly every single uh, SnapTech client uses Microsoft 365 as their um, cloud productivity suite. And um, for those clients, the way you, if you were, if you came out of today's demo and you're like, I want this, we need this, let's go right away. Um, you would add Copilot to your Microsoft 365 subscription. And um, it, it it requires an annual subscription. So they throw around the monthly cost, um, but it's it's your monthly cost, but you have an annual price that you have to pay. Right, so they're only selling it on an annual basis, so it's $360 per user uh, for the year, and um, it is the full featured product. It has everything and works with all of the um, main Microsoft, uh, at the applications that are in Microsoft 365. And then in the middle, if you wanted to dabble or you wanted to kind of put half a foot in the water, if you will, uh, you have Copilot Pro. So it doesn't work with Microsoft Teams, it has some capacity limitations. Nicely about it, you can uh, enable it on a month-to-month -month basis, which is nice. So you can give it a try for a quarter or two, and if you're not enjoying it or getting value, you can you can turn it off. Um, and, but but Copilot Pro is fairly functional because it, a lot of the same things we're going to be showing in Word and and PowerPoint today, you can use Copilot Pro to do it. So that's the the lay of the land. Um, I want to remind everybody that there is a Q and A function in GoToWebinar, and we invite you to put your questions in real time, and we'll try to get to them in real time. Um, and there will be a point later in the presentation where I'm gonna ask for some rapid feedback. So make sure you identify where the Q&A feature is, because I'm gonna ask the audience for a little bit of input while I'm doing my demo. Um, but we're gonna, I think one other comment to make is that um, Copilot is in preview mode which means Microsoft's collecting money, but they're still developing the product. <laughs> well, I mean, in all, serious, in all seriousness, um, there's amazing things you can do with the product today, but it, there are bugs. There are bugs, there are things that this technology does. Um, you know, in an hour webinar, we can only really scratch the surface on this topic, but uh, one comment to make is that uh, Copilot leverages generative AI and that's a probabilistic model. So literally every time you prompt the engine, it's gonna deliver you something different and you're not always sure what you're gonna get. And, and that's like one of the inherent um, capabilities of the technology. The probabilistic nature of it is what it allows it to generate, to, to leverage this huge model to generate content for you. But it's fairly unpredictable. There's some like weird stuff here. That, that there are weird things that will happen. Like. Um, and, and so maybe we'll see one or two of those today in the live demo, but, but just know that. And then there's also things that are buggy. Those are a couple caveats that we want to make as we start out. Certain applications are very robust today and certain applications need a lot of work. Like for example, we're not going to be demoing Excel today because Excel actually, there's lots of limitations. Like what you can do with Copilot for Excel is not terribly exciting yet today. But what you can do in Word and Outlook and Teams and PowerPoint, it's pretty killer. So that's what we're going to focus in on show today. 
Um, all right, so on to the demos. Sean, I'm gonna make you a presenter. Oh boy, you're gonna you're passing it to me, so I gotta pass it, giving you the baton. All right, let's see if we can find the the right screen to start here. And uh, I think we're sharing. See my yeah. outlook. We see your outlook. All right, fantastic. All right, well, and um, to kind of kick us off, I guess Ted, to just kind of reiterate your point, there's a lot of things that I really like about Copilot, especially when we talk about using it inside of Outlook, but to your inconsistent results, I'm gonna give you the good, but I'm also gonna give you the little bit of the bad too, as we kind of go through this. So the first thing that we're gonna kind of kick off and I'm gonna kind of demo here in Outlook is just how we're gonna create a new email. You can see one, and I'll, I'll, we'll come back to this one here in a second, but if I'm gonna create a new email in Copilot, we're gonna come down just like normal, you're gonna click the new button. We're gonna say, we're gonna send this to Ted. Um, we won't really worry about a subject right now. And let's say, we're gonna do uh, maybe a little bit of a fun one to, to kind of kick us off here. So when I go and create this with Copilot, I can click Copilot like this. And so basically what I did was click on the, the, the words there and it'll prompt me this way. I can also do the backslash and kind of kick it off, or there's a button up here where you can draft it with Copilot. So those are a couple of different ways that we can do it. Now, we just held an in-person event uh, here in Atlanta at the Big Green Egg, and which was awesome. And so just to kind of show you the versatility and the kind of information that Copilot, I guess, has access to, we're going to prompt it. And instead of you guys watching me type things out, I just kind of copied and pasted. But hey, I'm gonna send an email to Ted, and it's gonna say, you know, or write an email to Sean about the big green egg and some history about the grill and the kind of food you can cook on it. So as a fun example, that's where we're gonna kick it off and start. This is the other thing that's pretty interesting and neat. You can pick the tone of how you want the email to go. Now, this is pretty good. The thing that I wish it would do a little bit better, and and I have a feeling it's gonna get there, but I'll, I can't wait for this technology to learn my writing style, my tone, and I'm hoping eventually that when I get into tone, it'll have like, hey, I wanna use Sean's tone and write it as Sean, because now some of it's pretty good, some of it, you know, you're gonna go in there and kind of tweak, but you can pick different tones. So we're gonna pick casual on this one, and then you can also pick the length of the email that you wanna write. Uh, we'll pick long this time, and then I'm just going to click generate. And so what it's going to do is it's going to go out here based on my prompt, and it's going to write us an email. So we'll kind of give this a second as this kind of writes the email for us. And so here's the email that it wrote for us, which pretty good. Hey, Ted, you know, I want to tell you about the big green egg. Apparently, I got it for my birthday. So you, when you when you talked about the, the weird things that might pop up, here's one of them. Um, Ted, I, unfortunately, I didn't get the big green egg for my birthday, but it thought I did. Uh, but it gives us some information about that. So those are one of the weird things that Ted was talking about that you may see sometimes whenever you generate this. You can also come in and, and ask it to, you know, make some changes to it. Um, like, you know, um, let's see, you know, tell me more about the foods you can cook. And so we'll regenerate it, asking us to uh, tell us a little bit more. So you can make tweaks to this. I know this is a silly example, um, but just to kind of give you an idea of the things that, that this thing will do. So it'll kind of come in and hopefully incorporate that I still apparently got it for my birthday, which is neat, but it also tells me about some of the things that we can kind of cook on, on the big green egg, which is, which is pretty neat. So you can keep this, you can discard it, or you can regenerate it. The other thing I'll point out is it shows me both versions of it. So I can use this little toggle up here to switch back and forth and pick which one I want to keep. 
Um, so, so for this one, we can say, hey, I want to keep it. It drops in my email, and I can come in here and make any kind of changes to this. Now, for me, my experience with this is this gets me about 70% of the way. So I'll come in, I'll generate emails, and then I'll have to come in, read it, and tweak it. But instead of spending you know, five minutes or 10 minutes writing an email, it has cut down my time to write an email substantially. Okay, so that's kind of the first thing I'll show you is, you know, hey, this is how you can kind of come in and create a email. Uh, maybe we do one more quick little example that maybe is a little bit more kind of business focused. I'm just going to delete this. I'll send an email to Ted about the big green egg. Uh, this one we're going to write, and I'm going to type in, and I'm going to ask my service manager, Shane, um, to give me the latest information about some customer satisfaction survey and inform him that I need it by next Wednesday. So this is maybe a little bit more kind of business focused one. I left all the settings the, the exact same, and we'll watch it kind of craft this email for us. Okay, so here it is, a little bit of nicety tells them that I need this customer satisfaction survey. I need it by next Wednesday. And so you can see where I wrote just a quick prompt. And for this one, I got a pretty good email that I can easily send to Shane pretty quickly. So, so that's, that's my demo so far on kind of creating email and how that kind of works. The next one that I'll kind of click on is this is an email that Ted and I kind of started where I had Copilot write this. And then Ted, I'm pretty sure you had Copilot write the response back to me. That's right. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna reply to Ted and we're gonna use Copilot to do it. So again, I can click this little backspace. We're gonna write it back to Ted. And I'm gonna say something simple like, you know, hey, this looks great. I'm looking forward to the webinar. Um, we're going to make it a poem this time, and we're going to make it short just for fun. Just so you can kind of see the different things. Not that you would ever really write an email using a poem, but it's actually kind of funny. What's interesting about this is it will actually read the email, digest what's going on, understand the thread of the email, and then will help you respond based on the context of the email that is below. So that's pretty interesting. It wrote us a little bit of a poem about it. Now, if we, um, let's disregard that. Let's do it one more time. We'll kick it off using the co-pilot again. This time, I want just a short one, but let's just make it a casual tone. And this will give you a better example of how it looks, reads the information, and will respond to it. So you can see where it's actually pulling in some of the information from that it kind of created or read from down below as it crafts my response to Ted uh, about our upcoming webinar. So I'm able to kind of keep it and we can kind of move on. All right, the next one that I'm going to kind of demo. So we talked about creating an email. We talked and showed you how to respond to an email. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to delete this out. We're going to look at an email that I got. Uh, the April edition of Copilot for 365 updates. So this is a pretty interesting feature. So if this is a big long email and I don't want to read all of it, or imagine you've gotten, you've been gone, you've been on vacation, you're hanging out at the beach, you get back and you've got this big long email of coworkers going back and forth and it's you know 19 pages long and you don't want to read all of it. There's this great summary by Copilot. And so I can click summary by Copilot and it will actually summarize the email and give me a summary of what this email is about. So pretty interesting, pretty cool feature. So, so that's what I've got so far uh, for us as it relates to Outlook. Now let's jump over and take a look inside Microsoft Teams. So this is where I think I use Copilot more is inside Teams. There's a lot of interesting things that you can do inside Copilot. If you're familiar with Teams, you know, this should look all pretty familiar, but you now have this new Copilot button here. And it will also show you some prompts that you can use across the top. So 
the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to just ask this a question um, to provide me a summary. So provide me a summary of chats, documents, and emails about our Copilot webinar. And when I run this, this thing will go out and it's going to look inside of SharePoint, um, inside Teams, inside of our chats, and email looking for content that is around our Microsoft Copilot. And so here's what it found. It found a couple, no specific chats about it. It did find a couple of documents. It did find me a couple of emails about Copilot, which is also pretty neat. And it also provides these little references. So I can actually click on these little references and it'll actually pull up. And this is actually gonna open up the Word document that has my little script and demo of the things that we're gonna talk about. So that's an example of how it can find documents, find information. It also pulls it in and kind of shows you some information down here inside of Copilot, which is pretty neat. Okay, so let's do a new chat. I'm gonna show you a couple other things that I think are pretty interesting. These prompts are really pretty cool. Um, one of the prompts that I thought was interesting. Oh yeah, so here's another kind of prompt section down here below. So you can kind of click on this and it'll show you and give you ideas of other prompts that you can, can you know, use to find information, search. I have to be a little limited in here on things that I do search on uh, because this is my live. Uh, team environment. And so there's, you know, obviously we've got some, you know, clients, some specific information or sensitive information in here. So I'm, I'm trying to be very selective and kind of some of the things that we kind of demo and show just to kind of protect, uh, protect some of that. So, but this is a pretty interesting one. Let's, um, if you're have been in and around IT for a while, you know how much we like to use acronyms. And so if there's ever an acronym, that you want to do, you can always kind of pull this in. And this is an example of Copilot inside Teams that is helping me do search. So I don't have to go out to Google or Bing or anything to do some searching. I can do search right inside my own tool. And so we did a search for a, an acronym called RPA, which stands for Robotic Process Automation, which is a, a, a technology that we use internally to, to build some workflow automation stuff. And so not only did it find and give me a definition of it, but it also found me a presentation that Jared had done and had shared with me on Microsoft Teams about automation. So another cool little feature or thing that you can do um, inside of, inside here. So the last one that I'll pull up is we're gonna pull up OneNote. And so if you use OneNote, this was something interesting that I learned. I didn't realize that Copilot was integrated into OneNote until we started messing around with this. So I haven't really used this feature much, but I will just kind of point out, this is you know some notes that I had taken at a conference uh, about uh, Jesse Cole's five E's. And so you can come over here and I can click summarize. And you know, imagine this is, you know, obviously a lot more notes. This thing will create a summary for us of notes from this one note. And here we go. So it's kind of creating a little summary information from the notes that I took, which is great. It can also do things like like if I prompt it, hey, tell me more about Jesse Cole and the Savannah Bananas. So again, it goes back to being able to do you know, searches inside of the products that you're working on to generate content and search for you and pull up information. So if you've never heard Jesse Cole speak or never heard of the Savannah Bananas, uh, I encourage you to go check that out. That's a, a pretty interesting uh, story and, um, and, and sporting event that they're doing down in Savannah now. So, all right, Ted, anything that you think I missed or anything? Well, I should a couple questions. I think 
I think uh, let's. Uh, I think you can see questions? the Q and A log, and I think there's a question in there on round email. I think. All right. Let's see if I can't find that. Hold on. I got to do a little bit of scrolling here. All right. So I see a, a question here. Does it have the ability to edit an email you've already written to put in the tone that you're looking for? Uh, let, let's see. I haven't been able to. I don't think I can write, take an email that I have written and have it, it will summarize it, but I don't, it, it does not like take it and improve it. Like you might be able to take an email, take it over to like chat GPT. I haven't used it that way. I'm not saying that it can't do that. Um, let's see. Let's see what would happen if we go to reply to this email and I'm assuming you want, if I were to take this, uh, I thought I remember seeing something. Ted, do you know the answer to this one? Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things I haven't banged on much, but there's like, there, 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 there's an ability to, if you, I think if oh, you go back course. into, yeah, coaching by Copilot will tell you, give you suggestions. Yeah. So, so I, Honestly, I haven't used this feature much. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how the coaching piece of it works. I've mostly used it to craft new emails and, and to respond to emails. So I don't, Brandon, I wish I could answer your question, but I haven't used it that way. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna show an example in a little bit here on how in Microsoft Word, you can start with an outline, a simple outline, like mm -hmm. literally like, hey, here's my bullets of my ideas. And then you, and then it prompts, you can have it prompt for creating like an essay from your outline. So there is a ton, there is a ton of capability where you start with a, a simple set of words, um, but the kind of the lightweight thing, which is I crafted the email, what suggestions can you give me to make it better? I've found it's a little rough in doing that. Um, yeah. it likes to start, it's almost easier if it starts with like a full body of work and then you can make it shorter and, and change the tone, but, but taking your original content, um, cautionary note there, I guess is what I would say. Yeah. All right. So I'm ready to hand it back. You ready okay. to take the ball or take the baton? Let's see. Yes. Yeah, sure. All right. So, um, okay. I'm going to make this smaller. So I've got plenty of real estate here. All right. So what we're going to do now is, um, uh, and Sean, you know, keep me honest here or, 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 or let me know if I'm like off the rails and not showing the right screen or whatever. Uh, but, um, I see you know, word. okay. So for our audience, um, we're going to start with, uh, Microsoft word and, uh, I would say probably, well, probably, I don't know, Word and PowerPoint, pretty powerful. Because if you think about the, the main things uh, you're going to be creating with Word is kind of memos or reports, um, uh, you know, sometimes long written pieces, sometimes in, in Word, um, super use case for generative AI and Copilot. And then uh, kind of bootstrapping yourself in PowerPoint those are probably two really really killer apps. So uh, let's just start into it. So the very first uh, demo I'm going to show is I'm going to ask Copilot, and you see again, I actually need to move the little go to webinar thing because the Copilot menu item is up here on the right. Okay, um, uh, you'll, you'll see that you, you can you can kind of invoke Copilot in different ways. Sean showed a couple different ways in Outlook. Um, when you open up a brand new Microsoft Word document, you'll see it's right here, and it's literally the first thing it, it offers you. But you also see up here in the right that you have your Copilot menu item um, in Microsoft Word. And I'm in the uh, Microsoft Word Fat client here. Uh, a most of all this tech works exactly the same if you're using the web-based version of the Office applications. So I'm going to just do a quick um, example here, and I'm going to say write write a thousand word essay on the best practices 
or for social selling. And, you know, I think we were, you know, uh, having some fun with uh, some 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 topics during Sean's demo, but like just to give an example, like this is a topic I'm literally working on with my sales team right now. We have one of the gentlemen on the team is is working on a project uh, to really go deep on social selling and to educate uh, other members of the team. So this is like a real business issue we're wrestling with right now is how to how to help um, our sales team use things like LinkedIn and and um, uh, you know, LinkedIn and and other technologies like that um, to um, you know uh, you know do social selling. So um, let's see here. So um, okay, I I think I don't think I actually invoked Copilot. There we go. Now I need to. Co All right. So I'm going to now generate it. Okay. So this is while it's while it's thinking about it. My point is is that this is like a real business issue. So any business issue that you are um, working on today, you can think about Copilot as your research assistant. I mean, think of the hours you may have spent in your day-to-day -day work life, like researching up a topic, creating a memo, dropping a bunch of stuff from Google searches into a document, and having a bunch of links that you then need to go back and read. I mean, here, this thing is basically... Um, you know, generating a thousand word essay that's well thought out, well formatted, and um, is, you know, generating, you know, saving you hours of research. So, you know, think about Copilot. It's not Copilot. I, I saw somebody say something the other day online that I really want to reinforce here is Copilot is not autopilot. Copilot is your assistant. Copilot is your research assistant. Copilot is your uh, the thing that turbocharges you, Copilot is the thing that allows you to um, just work faster and smarter. And so, so here we are. So now I've created, I've created this thousand-word um, uh, essay. And if you have never learned anything, if you've never researched social selling, and this is like a brand new topic to you, a two and a half page essay on the topic is pretty darn useful. You know, if you're trying to, if you're trying to, you know, get ready for a meeting, like let's say your boss asks you the day before, hey, I want to like meet on this topic tomorrow. You're like, holy crap, I don't know anything about that. I'm going to, this is where you turn to walk into that meeting and, 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 you know, probably not be a superstar yet, but, but actually, you know, be able to be a little dangerous with some new knowledge. So here we now have a Microsoft Word document. And when I'm when I'm reviewing this, I'm like, okay, this is interesting, but I'm 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 not seeing enough content here about uh, about um, LinkedIn, for example. And so what I'm gonna what I want to do is I want to say um, I'm gonna say generate, you know, write an additional few paragraphs about how to use LinkedIn for social selling. Okay, so I'm, I'm just studying the memo and I'm seeing, hmm, LinkedIn's a big deal, but I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing enough content in here about LinkedIn. I mean, LinkedIn's mentioned a couple times, but I want something in this memo that has, um, uh, you know, deeper knowledge around LinkedIn. And so I'm gonna go ahead and have it generate this Okay, and then it's saying this is this is um, content that isn't based on this document. So it's pulling in, it's pulling in additional content from the web, and I'm just gonna, you know, right now it's not so agile that I can just say, you know, hey, uh, take that content above and drop it in as paragraph six. It's not that agile. But but basically, I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna drop this in. And I'm just going to add it right then in there. So I have a little bit of formatting to do, you know. So I probably need to, you know, have a header section that is, um, you know, like this, um, and then, you know, maybe do some formatting changes. But that's like an example of like where you can kind of really uh, bang on this and crank out your your memo in real time. Um, and then, um, so so that's like that's an example of generating. Um, generating a um, generating a memo from scratch. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to I'm not going to save this. I'm just going to leave this, and 
I'm going to go back into Word and I'm going to create another new document. So I'm in a new document and I'm going to invoke Copilot up here. And let's see here. Why isn't it supposed to give me? Hmm. Let's see here. Oh, you didn't pray to the demo gods enough. Um, let's see here. It should be asking me. I can create um, create a essay from a document. Let's see here. Okay. It should give me a new prompt where I can go grab an outline. Okay. Change topic. Bear with me here. Okay. Good Lord. Why isn't it? Okay. Um, all right. Let's change gears. Um, okay. What we're going to do is I'm going to, oh, I, okay. Let's see here. So um, he, let's do it this way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go create, create, I'm just going to do one more, one more memo. So create a essay on lead handling best practices in HubSpot. Okay, so. But what I wanted to do is do it over here. Hold on a second here. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay. All right. So again, it's creating it's creating an, a, a a memo in Word, which when then we can save off and we can then use this in uh, different executions um, down the road. So let's let it generate here. All right. Well, that generates. I got a couple of questions that I see prompted over here. So. Uh, someone wants to know if we can show some things in Microsoft Excel. Um, we touched on that earlier about Excel being a little lackluster, but maybe if there's time, um, I can kind of break Excel out. I haven't used Excel or Copilot inside of Excel very much or little at all, but if we've got time, maybe we'll try to break that out and I'll, I'll show you a little bit. Um, how's your, how's your, generation going still, it's still working on it it's it's almost there uh can copilot generate brand new text on a subject requested or is it looking for and then reporting back existing content by copying it verbatim from the source uh well that's that's what it's doing i mean the, in these yep. examples here so we're going to keep this and then i'm going to save this document and we're going to show a couple different use cases of how you would then so i'm going to save this and i'm going to make sure i'm saving in the right spot copilot demo v2 okay so i'm saving that off and and now what we're going to do is change gears to powerpoint okay so in PowerPoint, we're going to start so, a new. Hey, but, Ted, just real yep. quick before you yep. jump over, I got one more kind of question about Word here. Okay. Um, Michael wanted to know if he could send a 300 page contract to Copilot and had it provide a summary. The answer is yes. Right? Yeah, It'll summarize a document for you with like the main ideas. Um, can it provide the owner's risk within the contract? I don't think it's smart enough to do that 
different people, I think, maybe evaluate risk differently. But that might be something kind of cool to play with. I've never tried to to see if it would um, help identify risk inside of a contract like that. But it can most definitely go through a, a big contract and summarize that for you. Yeah, absolutely. So let's just do a little live demo here. And because uh, I think I have like a long uh, white paper in here that I, I think. Um, here, let's, uh, let's try this. So um, I'm going to open that up. Um, OK, so here I have a rather long um, white paper. And let's kind of let's kind of take that it um, let's kind of take that use case. So this this white paper is, you know, I don't know. It's uh, how many pages is this? This thing is, you know, it's twelve thousand words. Um, so good example. So you said three hundred page contract. I'm going to take a I'm going to take a thirty three page uh, document, which is a white paper, and I'm going to say summarize this document. So I mean, how many times have we all you know, downloaded a white paper, we open it up, we're like, holy cow, it's a 20 page white paper. Like, I don't have time to read this. So um, here's, uh, you know, embracing modernization from technical debt to growth uh, from <laughs> DXC. So a real, a real uh, page turner, obviously. Um, <laughs> and let's have it. So, all right. So here we go. So we're not doing your 300 page contract, but here's a 33 page uh, white paper that we're asking to summarize into a handful of bullets, an executive summary. So let's see what it tells us. All right, so it's almost there. So it's boiling down a 33-page document into, it looks like, you know, this document is about technical debt and modernization. The document identifies different types of organizational debt and their causes. The document discusses how to measure and articulate uh, technical debt. The document provides a four-step deal uh, plan to deal with technical debt, and there you go. So you have, and and it gives it gives um, one of the cool things it does. Like so, if you imagine, if you're talking about your 300 page, um, 300 page contract, um, it gives you know your references, and will actually you know go to the different points in the document based on these footnotes of where it summarized this content from. So uh, pretty good. So good question. Um, good question. You summarizing documents, long documents in Word is a total layup in in um, in Copilot for Word. So okay, here's another one. Um, and Sean, I'm gonna. I think you can see the Q and A log, right? So I can see right. the questions. Yeah. All right. So we are going to. Uh, this is almost like a parlor trick. It's crazy. <laughs> I, I want. I want you just on this one. Um, I want you to simply, somebody give me a topic, maybe a hobby you're really interested in or a trip you're going to take this summer, and you want to create a 10 to 15 page PowerPoint presentation to tell your family all about the trip you're about to take. So, Sean, I'm asking the audience to give us, give us an idea, and then you give me the prompt, and we're going to show how to, okay. how to do this. We'll see. So Let's anybody, it, it could be at. any, it could be anything. Just use the Q and A log and give us your, try to stump us. Uh, let me see what we got. Oh, best baseball park to visit. Oh, beautiful. Okay, uh, create. Well, that's easy. It's truest. It's the Atlanta Braves. Come on. I don't. No. <laughs> This one's good. See, he even agrees. Absolutely. Go Braves. Okay, so here we are. So we're creating, so my prompt was create a presentation about visiting every baseball park in the United States. And let's see what it comes up with. Oh, that's a good one. You know, all right, so here we go. So, so we, this is like, 
you know, the amazing thing, I mean, <laughs> is, you know, the how this just bootstraps the heck out of you. Let me just make a comment. Like, well, let me sh let's show off what we have, first of all. So here we have just generated a, you know, 13 page PowerPoint presentation that has nice graphics. Um, you know, hit, you know, we start out, okay, history of ballparks. And it looks like here, like kind of a vintage, vintage uh, baseball diamond, brief history of baseball parks, some old, you know, old photos, the evolution of baseball parks, um, East Coast baseball parks, Fenway, Yankee Stadium. Wait a minute, where are the Braves? Um, let's see. Wait, whoa, the whoa, this, is there something on the south here? Wait a minute, is, we didn't. This is bias. Oh, West Coast. So, so you, you see this is this technology made by somebody in Seattle. Um, it's all West Coast focused. All right. Um, you know, Wrigley Field, Minute Maid Park, culture of baseball, baseball traditions. So, I mean, this is pretty friggin' amazing. So, in my opinion, let now one of the things is, um, you know, Microsoft obviously has some boundaries um, for, um, you know, what stock photo the photos they can use. They can't like simply go raid Shutterstock or Adobe stock and pull in their whole, you know, stock imagery universe. So I find that sometimes you do one of these PowerPoint presentations from scratch and it, um, it, it pulls in some weird graphics and you can't just, it's not as simple as just saying, hey, I don't like the image on page 10, change it. You know, um, it, it just, it's not, it's not that agile and it doesn't have enough um, imagery content to go do that. But what you see here is this, this thing's pretty darn slick in terms of a good start to your PowerPoint presentation. So that, that's one where I wanted to just ask the audience, show us an example. So we're going to, we're going to leave that one and we're not going to save it. And we're just going to create a new one. And what I want to do here is um, I'm going to again invoke uh, Copilot. And I'm going to create a presentation from a file. So in this case, I'm going to go grab, I'm going to go grab the, um, I'm going to go grab the one of the 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 word documents we just did on best practices for social selling and I'm going to have it so um whether you whether you save off something from word or you create your own outline it can go powerpoint can go take an outline from word and then create a presentation from your outline or from an essay or memo that you have stored in your OneDrive so here we're going to ask it to go create a best practices for social selling for SaaS executives just from Word, and let's see what it does in terms of creating a PowerPoint. Which that's awesome! What a great use case that is. Yeah. So so I mean, think of the use cases. You go, um, you know, you, you go to a, a conference. You go to a conference and you take like five pages of notes you can go just grab your notes and say, build me a PowerPoint presentation on my main takeaways from the event. And, and then, you know, bang, PowerPoint's gonna create a, I mean, Copilot for PowerPoint is gonna go ahead and create this presentation from, from the, your, the Word document. Okay, so, so here we are. You know, I, I think one of the thing, one of my observations is that you know, sometimes when it's creating a document from a, either an outline or from a from a memo, it sometimes is not as agile in terms of bringing in imagery. This one did a pretty good job, though, of bringing in um, images and, um, you know, pretty darn good, you know, to go from. Um, so so one other thing I want to show you is um, so that's that's like, OK, I'm in PowerPoint, so we showed it. Like make me a power, maybe get a presentation about anything. We also asked it to go into grab a Word document I've already worked up and create a PowerPoint from that. And and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to back out of this one, not save it. I'm gonna create another new one. And then I'm going to invoke Copilot over here. That's great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same exercise we just did, but now we're gonna pick the HubSpot memo. 
and I'm going to look for that HubSpot file. Lead handling best practices from HubSpot. OK, I'm going to create it from here. And I'm just kind of trying to be mem uh, cognizant of our time. Um, OK, so remember, we, we started in Word. We created a memo on um, lead handling best practices of HubSpot. We, we liked it. We saved it off. And now we're making a presentation out of it. While this kind of, generates, yeah. just because I don't think we're going to have enough time to dive into Excel like someone had asked, a couple of the cool things that I would just kind of point out um, that I played with in Excel is it does a pretty good job of like grabbing a table and then you could ask it questions inside your table. So like a, a sample would be like a, a sales forecast. So if you just think of like opportunities and agents and you know, sales category and forecast amount kind of deal, that's the sample kind of data set that I'm looking at. You're able to go in there and, and, and ask it questions like, you know, what's the highest forecasted amount? And so if it's a long data sheet, it'll easily be able to find that for you. It'll also do some conditional formatting. So you could tell it things like, hey, anything over 150,000, turn it you know, green or whatever. And it'll do some formatting, things like that. It'll also you know, find some outliers in your data if you want to do that or provide averages and some stuff like that. So I would just encourage you to go play around with Excel. I, I haven't done that much, but I want to give you a little information about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 what I wanted to show on on this slide is remember designer. So, Copilot in Microsoft Power, uh, Power Copilot for Microsoft PowerPoint is powerful, but don't forget designer. Designer's been around a long time, and designer is uh, kind of an AI like oriented tool as well. But it's been around a lot longer. But with designer, you can um, really take any any slide and um, you know change the formatting. Um, you know, to something that that you feel like is maybe a little bit better. So this is this is not giving me like a lot of really good ideas here, but but on you could take any one of these slides and or one of, any one of these slides and then use Designer as a way to uh, toggle or change the layout. Um, you know, so for example, like hey, maybe I just want to go with like something like this, or maybe I want to change so i've been very able very quickly able to kind of oh i like this image but i want the data shown in a slightly different way and so with designer designer lives right here along copilot and you can just go right on through your powerpoint and um and I, you know it, it didn't give me a lot of good goodness on this one but like hey give me some more design ideas let's see how let's see well, like, maybe I that yeah. real quick i've got a couple of questions we've got okay just a couple of minutes left so right. i want to make sure okay. I get to these couple of questions that I see. Uh, yeah. The first one is, is there a similar product for Adobe uh, PDF? And so I, I don't know of Adobe working on anything like this. Uh, I would imagine though you could, um, you know, create a PowerPoint or create a Word document, save it as a PDF. I know that's not quite the same, but a, a little close. And then uh, one more question about Microsoft Teams. I wasn't able to really demo this um, just because of, you know, kind of sensitive data. But the question is basically, will Copilot for Team act as a note taker? And the answer is yes. So you have to turn on the transcription inside of Microsoft Teams. And any meeting that you do, it will record and you record the meeting. It'll record the meeting. It'll generate to do's and it'll generate a a uh, transcript and summary of the meeting. So sorry I wasn't able to kind of demo that, but that's a great point. Thank you for asking that question. That is going to be a, a killer app. I think it's going to get better and better. Um, we currently use a different tool internally right now, but as Ted and I were talking about our renewal on this tool, it was like, okay, we're only going to do the year because we have a feeling Copilot is going to catch up and be there. And so so Michael, you're you're spot on on that question. Absolutely, Copilot can do that for you right out of the gate now. Yeah, and and back on the PDF question, 
Um, well, I could actually touch on a demo I showed earlier. That white paper, the DXC white paper on technical debt, I actually started with that, that white paper in PDF format. I used um, Adobe Acrobat Pro to, to turn that document into a Word document. So I went from PDF to Word. And then once I have it in the Microsoft ecosystem, I, you know, you saw what we did. We had a Word version of the, of the white paper. We were able to summarize it. We could have then uh, actually created a PowerPoint from that, you know, from that, that Word document. So that's kind of, you know, th there are some hacks. Another hack I did is when I was a couple of times when I created these PowerPoint presentations with Copilot, I was disappointed with the graphic imagery. And I, you know, remember a lot of this is the artistry of using all these tools together. And, you know, we have an Adobe uh, uh, stock photo, you know, uh, subscription. So you can, you know, you don't have to like rely exclusively on this tech, you know, so I actually went in and created a PowerPoint where I pulled in a handful of images that I thought were better from Adobe uh, stock stock photos, as an example. So. Yep. And so the response to that was perfect on the PDF. Glad that answered your question. And then the other one that I see in here is we will be purchasing Copilot for M365 for our corporate team. So, no okay. doubt. For me, it's a no-brainer. Three hundred sixty dollars. I get way more value for three hundred sixty dollars. Probably just if you think about the, you know, your time and how much you can save, you can save that off your first PDF or off your first PowerPoint presentation that you do. Right. Yeah. And there's it. Th this technology. I mean, I there were a couple of things I was trying to demo, and I was like, where did that menu item go? It's it, there is a learning curve, right? There is a learning curve here. But I think I think we saw in today's demo the wide variety of things you can get after and do, and the way this thing gets you to 70 to 80 percent almost every time. And that is just, it, there's a learning curve. It, it, it'll take some time for this to work into your, your normal workflows, but this is like a total game changer. So it sounds like some of our audience uh, felt the same way, uh, which is killer. Uh, hopefully we moved everybody's knowledge ahead a little bit with today's session. Um, thank you very much for coming. Um, we're gonna wrap up here because we're out of time. So Sean, thank you very much for, for your demos and working with me on today's presentation. Uh, next month, we're going to do a deep dive on AI image creation. So we're going to look at a couple different tools that allow you to create custom images using generative AI. And our marketing colleague, Nathan, is going to be our uh, knowledge expert um, uh, on that session next week or next month. So please tune in on June. Um, thanks a lot for joining us for our webinars. Look for this on demand if uh, you want to get a replay for a colleague. Um, on YouTube. And thanks a lot for everybody for joining in today's session. Have a good one. All right. Thanks, Take care, everybody. See you now.